In this video, I'll guide you through everything you need to know about Auto Layout, from what it is to why it's so useful, how it works, and we'll go through all the features so you understand them. And lastly, I'll show you some practical examples and how to build with it. So by the end of this video, you'll be equipped with the skills to understand Auto Layout and have confidence to build with it in your next project. What is Auto Layout? It's a powerful feature in Figma that helps designers create responsive and flexible layouts by applying constraints and rules to design elements. It automatically adjusts the layout based on content changes, screen sizes, or device orientation, saving time and effort in applying designs to different contexts. If you're like me and you came from Adobe products originally, you're probably wondering why you should even use it. You should be using it because it helps streamline your design workflow, making it much easier to create responsive and adaptable designs without having to do manual updates to everything. It helps save time, maintain consistency, and ensure your designs are great across various screen sizes. It also helps bridge the gap between design and development. Traditional design tools don't really consider the development, so it leaves a lot of area in the middle when you're doing handover to a developer for things to not be consistent or come out differently than you intended them in your design. Auto layout helps bridge the gap it brings design closer to development and takes in consideration of the fundamentals of the box model. Meaning it means there's less room for things to go wrong and helps streamline the handover from design to development and getting things live. First out to apply auto layout, you'll want to learn the shortcut shift A. You'll be pressing shift A quite a lot and it just becomes a natural part of your workflow. So select anything and click shift A and that will apply auto layout and you get this little message here saying that. So you can apply auto layout to any amount of item. So we'll apply to this heading and this body. So shift A, and then you'll get this panel on the side that appears. So let's go through all the features on the side here so we have a good understanding of it. So the first one here is direction. So vertical layout or horizontal layout, whichever way you click, your content will follow that within this box. The next feature is space between items. So if we hover over here, we see that we have 68 pixels. So by changing this, we can come here and you'll see the little double arrow. You'll be able to set how many pixels you want between your items. Next up, we have horizontal and vertical padding. So the padding is the space between the items and the bounding box. So here, if we put 24 horizontal padding, we can see that here. And then the same for vertical, we set 24 here. And you can see that around here, so the box is the corner, and then you have the padding and then your content is within that. This is super important when designing buttons and cards and most elements in web design. You'll wanna be able to set precise padding. You can also set the padding individually by clicking this button here and then you can set whatever padding you want for each side. So if you're on 64 or 32, you can have different size padding. We'll apply auto layout to these images and we'll select them and then click the auto layout here and paste them in here so they appear and they're inheriting the same spacing that we had before, so 24 pixels. If we go into the advanced setting, there's other settings in here, spacing mode. So packed is when you set, as we're setting before, with space between, so 24 pixels, and the other one is space between. So packed is when you set 24 pixels. If we stretch this and we click space between, it will evenly split your items in the frame. So as this frame gets bigger, it will still evenly split them across. Next up is strokes. So you can exclude them or you can include them. So for this example, we'll apply a really thick stroke to the images here. So 24 pixels. So currently it's included in the layout, but if we exclude it from the layout, it will not take that into consideration as now it's lining up with the, the content box, the stroke isn't included. But if you include it, this will be the bounding box then, and it will follow that distance. So with setting space between, you can also set negative space. So if we did negative 12, you'll see that the items will start overlapping each other. So the next setting is last on top or last first. So last on top, it will follow this order. If you do last first, it will flip the order the other way around. Another feature is the alignment feature here. So wherever you set it will align your content there. So currently we're top left. If we moved it down to the bottom right, it will flip your content that way. Still respecting the padding and the size of things, but you can change where you want your align. If you want it center aligned, top aligned, you can set that all in there. Another great feature in the advanced settings is align text baseline. So if you have different items that you need to align and see how they're not aligning perfectly because they're different size type, you can come in here and set align text to baseline and it will spec the baseline of the text and it'll align everything perfectly that way. Another important setting to understand with auto layout is the vertical and horizontal resizing. So we have three options. We have fixed, hug, and fill. 
So fixed, it'll stay at whatever you set it as. So if we change it to 500, it'll be 500. It won't respect the outside, so it's not very responsive. If we set it as hug, it's just gonna hug the content here. So for an example, this will just go for as long as the content needs to be in the box. We go back, and then the last one is fill. So to have fill applied, set the one above to fixed, and we'll set this one to fill. So then this is great as you want things to resize. So now this is set to fill. If we make this smaller, it's gonna automatically resize as the card gets bigger or smaller to fill up 100% of the horizontal. And we can set it for vertical as well. So fill, and this will take up as much content as it can, as much size as it can. So this works really well as you kind of build out a card just as an example here. So if we build this out a bit more, we'll apply a background and a drop shadow just so you can see the outside of the card and its bounding boxes. And now as we look in this card, we actually want these to sit at the bottom. So we'll apply auto layout to these two, so they're together. So now this is gonna be 24 here. And now we go to the next level out and we actually want this to be spaced to the bottom. So we change it from packed to space between. So now it's hugging the top and the bottom as you go up and down. We also want it to be wrapped as well with this, with the image. So select it, shift A, apply auto layout. And now we have another level here. We don't want any difference between that. So we select that as zero. Now, if we want these cards to be responsive, we need to make sure that some things are set up. So we'll set the outside as fixed for now. And then we'll set the elements in between to fill. So they fill 100% of it. We want this to fill that way, this to fill, and we want the image to fill as well. We want the image to say fixed height, but we want it to fill horizontally. And we want this content box here to fill as well. So now as we resize this card horizontally, you can see how it's actually expanding as it goes. Now we can take this a step further as well. So say we had three of them next to each other on a page, and we want all these to be wrapped together as well. So Shift A, Auto Layout, we'll do 24. And then you can also, to the frame here, we want this to have auto layout as well. Shift A, set this as fixed for now. And then same thing, just larger. So now we're gonna fill this content wrapping box and then all the cards here are gonna fill on top of that as well. Now that we've set auto layout and we've set it all to fill, so it's responsive as it resizes horizontally. If we make the screen bigger or smaller, you can see how the text and the heading actually starts resizing as it gets smaller. So this is really good to show how things will work responsively if you're doing a desktop version. So from 1400 all the way down to maybe you might hit tablet about it at a thousand, but you know that your content is actually gonna grow and shrink in perspective, and it's actually gonna fit the right dimensions that you set it up as. Now that you understand auto layout, you'll be even faster in Figma. But if you wanna save more time and level up your game even more, check out this video here.